So it's been about a week later, uh, about a week and a half actually, as I'm filming this right now. And when I first, you know, cleaned it off and showed it to you in the last video, I was like, it's cool. But the more I looked at it, the more I realized that this thing is just too cool not to go unused. The earliest day codes of the chips inside it say 1979. This is probably the oldest piece of equipment that I now own. And so I thought it'd be really cool if I hooked this up to a DOS PC as a modem and had to communicate with another computer here. But that is a lot easier said than done. So first things first, I just wanna give a little closer look at it uh, and I'll take the cover off. So last time, I don't know if I showed what was under this box because yes, this is a cover that comes off with two screws and I'll go ahead and undo those. One of them just fell out as I opened this. There's the other one. And then the cover comes off like that. And on the other side, like that. And what's under here is looks like, I think that's a relay. I'm not 100% sure on this though. Pretty sure that looks like a relay. That looks like a transformer. That looks like a high voltage capacitor rated for 250 volts, plus or minus 10%. I can't read the microfarads because it's all the way under there. Uh, but yeah, that looks like a full bridge rectifier. Some more chips were under there as well. So that is probably, that is most definitely the side that the phone line comes in on. Because you can see it comes in the tip and the ring those are the red and green wires there they go right to there to that relay to switch it on and off like that to take it on hook versus off hook so that's why when i plugged this in last time you may recall that i said i heard a click that was probably that relay clicking inside so pretty cool they keep it under a protective cover so no one can open it So that is what's under that black cover right there. And the screw just fell out again, so I'm just gonna hold it on there with one screw until I fix that later. Uh, 300 bits per second. I think I corrected that myself the last time. I said it was a higher speed than it was. No, this is actually a 300 bits per second modem. At such a low speed, 300 bits per second, 300 baud, they are the same thing, essentially. And so, let me put this back. This is going to be a bit longer video today, because I'm going to show you everything uh, I went through to get this to work with the computer. Um, and it's going to be a bit unedited and kind of rough, so apologies in advance for that. Uh, but I just think this is so cool. So, obviously, the first thing you need to hook something like this up to a computer is a connector. This is a RS-232C port or more commonly known as 25 pin serial port. So obviously the first thing I ordered was a cable from Amazon. They still sell these. So this converts RS-232, 25 pin serial port to a nine pin DB9 serial port. So all it does is it makes it into this kind of connector. And with this, I can plug it into one of the old PCs because if you come with me for a second, None of the old PCs I have contain that connector. This is a parallel port. That's not the same thing. That's a game port. This it right here is the COM serial port. And same thing over with this one here. It does not. That's LPT. So that's not a serial port. This is the only serial port. So I don't have a computer old enough that it would have a 25 pin serial port on it. So unfortunately, I have to buy this adapter, which is cool because uh, it does work. The other important thing to note about this adapter is that it is not a null modem cable. There is no crossover between transmit and receive on it. Transmit goes directly to transmit, receive goes to receive, uh, RTS goes to RTS, CTS goes to CTS, as with all the lights in the front. So this is not a connection between two computers. I specifically checked the pinout and bought this specifically. This is a straight through or pass through cable, not a null modem cable, because obviously I want to use it with a modem. So. It plugs in on the back like that. 
and it works just fine. Well, that's not the end to the problems that this thing has. I want to make a note. Everything that I've done in the past week regarding this thing has been completely new for me. I know nothing about modems. I knew nothing about modems up until this week. I read all about them. I read about the connectors. I read about the serial port UART format for them. Um, and so I kind of read about like how they work with the modulating on the line, how 300 baud works with the line. Um, the different transmitting and receiving mark tone or carrier frequencies, all of that. So um, I might get something wrong. And if I do, please do not hate me in the comments below. Because, uh, again, I am brand new to all of this stuff that has to do with modems. But I'm fascinated by it, which is cool. And so, also, before I get too ahead of myself, I mentioned that it's not going to work with the computer the way it is. Why is that? Well, I can show you. So right here, um, I'm going to try and plug it into a modern computer with a USB port. So right here I have, I found this lying around at the workshop. This is a apparently a 9-pin serial to a USB converter. So we can go ahead and plug the DB9 connector into this one, which is a male jack, like that. And we can go ahead and plug the USB into a computer and look at what's on the serial port. And I'll show you uh, the problem with this thing. All right, so coming over here to my modern Windows 7 laptop, I just finished installing the driver for this USB to serial port. So technically this thing goes USB to nine pin serial port to 25 pin serial port. Um, I set the speed down here to 300 baud. Uh, everything else looks good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open TerraTerm. So this is just a terminal program. And I'm going to attempt to open COM4. Here we go. And let's set it up correctly. So, yeah, we want a speed of 300 baud. Uh, we're going to go 8-bit none 1. So 8 and 1 for all of the transfers in this video, unless I say we're going to use parity, uh, because I'm pretty sure that's what I set it for. So I'll get into that in a little bit. But now... If we go over here, we can see we're making some progress because now the RTS light just turned on. This means uh, ready to send, I believe, and it is asserted by the computer when the computer can receive information from the modem. Uh, clear to send is raised by the modem that tells the computer whether it can receive information. So that's why I'm going to use handshaking, as you saw me set, RTS-CTS handshaking. So the computer just raised RTS. Now when I type onto COM4, which is how I have it set up, it's the data is going through the USB into the 9-pin serial, then into the 25-pin, uh, which goes into the modem. And you can see whenever I type, uh, it's kind of hard to see. I don't know if you can, actually. The light flickers. See? On that thing and on the modem. Whenever I type, the transmit light comes on. 300 baud. So if I hold down a key, it sends the data. So it's getting the data. So we know that the serial port decoder inside it works. We know that the cable's good. We know that that thing is good. Uh, we know that we're interfacing to it in the correct way. So this takes care of a lot of stuff in terms of communication between the modem and the computer. There is some other stuff, but now we're going to get to the communication between the modem and the phone line, which is a little bit more complicated. But again, I'm getting too ahead of myself. One more thing I wanted to mention is that um, the it, this modem right here is external. I don't really know the time period of when the production of this model began to when it ended. I do know that uh, the one I have, the serial number, is pretty high. So, and the the um, the wide variety of dates on all the chips from 1979 all the way up to 1982 uh, tells me that this was an end of line production unit. Uh, that this one came out a bit later. Um, but still, being so old, it doesn't support the Hayes command set. And what that is, is if you type AT into the terminal directly to a modem as a command, it should reply with OK. And then you can send a bunch of commands like set the loudness of the speaker, 
uh, set how many rings until it auto answers. Uh, you can use a command to dial out. You can use a command to pick up the phone. You can set a bunch of stuff. But with this thing right here, it doesn't support any of that. So if I, I'm going to actually turn local echo on. And if I type a T, it doesn't say anything back. So what this tells me is it doesn't support that command set. And so in order to dial out, because if I wanted to dial with a normal modem, I would type ATD and the number I wanted to dial. And if I did that, it would dial. But as you can see, it's not even attempting to do that. So this is a problem between communication between the modem and the computer. It doesn't support the Haze or AT command set. So in order to dial with this modem, you actually need to plug into a phone, pick up the phone, dial the number, wait until you hear a tone from the other side, then hang up the phone and switch your modem on. That is the procedure for dialing correctly. I mentioned last video, I cannot find the VA355 user manual or even any information about it besides a product uh, promotion listing. Instead, I found a very, very similar later model that, that is uh, 1,200 bits per second. So it was like the one right after this, but it could default back to this mode. It could default back to 300 bits per second. And that took care of most of the dip switches. I'm going to unplug this. Most of the dip switches inside this thing. So if I can open the cover again, you may have noticed that there were dip switches, two banks, bank A and bank B. And in the thing, and I'll probably in post put up the PDF of it, um, there was extensive documentation on how to dial, how to answer, how to uh, support an auto answer feature, how to set the dip switch settings correctly, and how to set other settings correctly. And it was almost all identical to this model. There was only a few things that when I flipped them on, it would, it would just go crazy, so I just left them off. In fact, uh, they were mostly set correctly already by whoever last used this. I only needed to change a few things. And even then, after a while, I changed them back because I realized I didn't need them or I realized that they didn't do what the manual said that they did. But I will put a link to that manual down in the description uh, because, and I will also uh, put a link to it like in a Google Drive in case the website goes down because it is a pretty old thing and there's probably only one copy of it. So um, with the dip switch settings the way I have them, if you want to look, uh, th this means they're off. So that's off, 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 on, off, on, off, 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 on, off, on, off, off, on, on for bank B there. And so that's the way I have them. And if you want to know what each one of those does individually, uh, you can look at the manual where he goes into a ton of detail. Uh, and I only need to change a few things. Within my first early test with this modem, um, I used my cell phone, uh, and I wish I could uh, replicate this now, but I don't think I can, uh, but you'll hear it later. I used my cell phone, um, plugged this into the landline down at our house, I took it down to my house, um, and, dialed its, and dialed our number from the cell phone, um, and this thing used its auto answer feature and picked up the phone and transmitted its answer tone, and I could hear it through my cell phone. And then after a while of not hearing anything back, it hung up. So I can verify that the auto answer pickup and the correct tone at uh, so many hertz, in fact, the number is there on your screen right now, uh, that is the answer tone for the Bell 103. Uh, and so that was all being done correctly. But there was some problems when I tried eventually to dial out from this to another phone or to another modem and I'll get to those later but the main problem is up here in the studio um, I just we just finished putting more electric in uh, but it's not heated up here I mean I have like a little heater and that's about it up here in the winter uh, it gets pretty cold um, uh, and there's also basically just electricity no running water no heat and no phone lines so if I wanted to be able to use this up here, there is no phone, and there's pretty much no chance of any phone ever being put in here. Now, originally, I wanted to dial down from here to our, my house to transmit data over the phone line in case, like, I needed a file, because I have a file server down there with a bunch of old drivers that I keep uh, for all the computers and stuff and accumulate in my wealth of files. So if I needed something like that, I could just dial down, 
transmit it through over the modem and receive it here and use it. Uh, the problem with that is, of course, there's no phone in this room. So I invested um, in one of these. This is a phone line simulator, and you do not want to know how much this costs. I guess Viking has a monopoly over the market of these things because this was probably much more expensive than it needed to be. Uh, but I can say that it's very nice quality, uh, completely works. So what this what this does is basically you plug one phone or one modem or fax machine or whatever in there, and you plug another one into the uh, second port, and they can talk to each other. It, it simulates dial tone, it simulates ringing, it simulates the loop current and the talk that is needed to communicate between them. And the reason why you need something like this, and you can't just, it can't work by just plugging uh, a phone cable directly between modems is because you need a loop current. You need, first of all, you need to be able to establish a ringing voltage and all this stuff. But essentially when it comes down to it, you need loop current uh, from a battery or from a DC power source so that it can transmit the audio signals back and forth between them because they're not powering it themselves. They need some voltage on the line to send those signals through. Uh, and that's also the same reason why it wouldn't work um, uh, having uh, two modems plugged in on the same phone line. They can dial out to a remote modem, but even when that modem hangs up, they can't talk to each other. So you need something like this to simulate the phone line with uh, its loop current talk battery, dial tone, everything like that is all included and uh, done correctly. Because as you may know, it's pretty actually, it's pretty hard to uh, accurately simulate a phone line because there's a lot of stuff that goes on uh, with it. And I can get into more detail about everything that goes on, but I'd be here talking for hours. So basically this thing uh, is necessary uh, because it gives two phone lines that can talk to each other and you can't just use one. You have to use something like this. So with this thing, I'll be able to plug one modem from one computer into one side, another modem from another computer into the other side, and transmit files and uh, use a terminal on both computers. Uh, and specifically, I was thinking about my two old computers sitting over there in the corner. I really wanted to, uh, the purpose of this video was actually to use this thing, hook, uh, hook up the modems between them, and see if we can get some file transfers going on or see what, see what happens. Uh, and so that's why I needed this thing. So um, I'm actually going to do this little experiment now. So I'm going to take the phone line from the modem, uh, from the Rackelvatic modem, and place it on number two. And then I'm going to take a phone, which is sitting over here. This just so happens to remind me that I was going to talk about this later. Um, this thing right here is a phone because obviously you need a real phone to work with this thing because remember it can't auto dial you have to use a phone and dial to another modem um so i found this phone in the same outbuilding or place down the road where i get all of my old electronics in fact this thing maybe another modem two phones all were in the same bin so with this thing i'm going to plug this phone into the other side I'm going to plug in the modem and I'm going to plug in the phone and let's see. So we have data set ready. Make sure both of those things are in there. Here's our phone over here. In fact, I'm going to bring the tripod over. Um, again, sorry, I don't script anything and that happens in my videos. So this all is as it happens in real time. Um, so if I go ahead and put this on speakerphone, it will automatically pick up uh, with dial tone and dial the other side and will ring. Ring, ring indicator came on picks up auto answer feature there's the answer tone so that is what came through on my cell phone when we first tried this when i first just dialed uh, the modem's number um, and so this is the answer tone and eventually it will hang up if i was to hook up the phone and the rackelvatic modem on the same line through a splitter in fact i have a splitter over here something like uh something like this that just takes off one 
and makes it two like that. If I was to plug both this and the modem onto the same line and have another modem on the other line as I plan to do, then in order to call from it, I just pick up this phone, dial the number of the other modem, wait until I hear a response from the other modem, then switch over to this modem and hang up here. Then this modem will be able to talk to that modem. And that is how you dial from the Rackle Vatic. So uh, it supports auto answer, but manual originate. Technically, it also supports manual answer, but I haven't had a chance to test that because it auto answers every time. Uh, in case you're interested, that is what this switch down here is for to pick up manual answer, that one right there, the one that springs back into place. Um, this right here, I'm going to use it with one of those computers over there and the arrangement that I just described. And then for the other modem, actually, let me go ahead and take you over to the old computers. Um, so this is the CA810E that I showed off. And indeed, it came built in with this modem card. This was in the computer when I found it. Um, and this is a PC Tel card. But because Windows 98 does not natively uh, support this, because this probably came from a more modern PC. But it just so happens that, let's see, it, uh, I put it through uh, the uh, PCI sniffer over in my test bench and looked at the chipset, and the chipset is actually from the HSP56 micro modem. So I did find drivers for that. I found actually five tried them one of them did work so it works in the computer uh, is able to be detected as the modem supports the Hayes command set I typed AT it replied okay I uh, it, it passed all the self tests I configured it correctly there is just one problem with this and I think that it is damaged because and hopefully someone in the comments can enlighten me because again this is not my specialty uh, with modems it's just uh, if I plug it into wall or phone, either one does this, and we come over here to my thing. This right now should be off hook, but as soon as I plug it in to the phone line simulator, it detects it as being on hook and rings the other side. And so now this just picked up. And as soon as I unplug it, that goes away. I measured the resistances and it's about 15 to 16 mega ohms which is high, but for some reason it still triggers the, um, the uh, phone line simulator. And even plugged into a regular landline, I tried this, this makes the phone busy. So it behaves like it's always off hook instead of um, being an on hook. So as soon as I plug it in, it rings the other side. And that is not supposed to happen. Uh, it's supposed to be um, on hook until I pick up with the AT dial command. So that is not to say that this is a lost cause because I believe that I can still use this modem in the other computer. So right now I'm just gonna go bring all this stuff over to the other side, set it up on both PCs, and then try a few experiments and let you know when I come across success. So here's the CA810E. And the first thing I need to do this was this has been on the whole day for some reason. I think it just turned on by itself because um, it does that sometimes. Um, I need to turn this off. Come on. Please respond. I just love old computers. They're so slow. So you're going to need to shut down for a second. Um, there we go. And I'm going to need to open this because I need to put the modem card back. Make sure everything is fine. This, this computer opens a really weird way. It's really interesting, actually. I'd like to show you this. So in order to open this computer right there, no screws at the back. The front pops off like that. And then the cover slides out forward, lift up, and bring it forward. So it doesn't slide backwards, it slides forward and is kept on by the front plastic panel. 
there. Uh, so now I will take you around to the back and plug it in. So it was originally in the top slot. So I'll just put it back in that one. Okay, just like that. And here is the screw for it that I left sitting there. So just screw that card in place. Actually, the, the model, the real model number of the card itself will be on your screen right now. Um, but I couldn't find, though that card exists, I couldn't find drivers for it. So um, I wasn't able to find drivers for that card exactly. But I used, I, I looked at its chipset um, on the PCI bus and indeed was able to come up with uh, the fact that it uses another chipset. In fact, it uses a more common chipset that a lot of different modem cards from different brands use. And so a driver for that particular chipset of that card will work with all of them mostly. And indeed, I did find one that worked with this card. Um, so it shows up in the system as something it's really not, but it works all the same. All right. Let's go ahead and power this computer on again. Hopefully you can see the screen all right. I did invest in these nice bright lights in my new studio. So it's coming up now. And I'm going to go ahead and get the second computer set up, but... This is, just make sure it boots up here. Take your time. There we go, F1. There we go. All right, so while that boots up normally, I'm going to bring the rest of the equipment over. Right, so this computer came back up, and we can go ahead and see under System Device Manager, modem it is indeed an hp 56 micro modem down there but it, it's not really it's just using this chipset and it reports all the correct properties i have it configured for eight even one so let me explain about this so this is where i'm going to be using even parity so eight data bits even parity one stop bit this gives a total data length of eight data bits plus one stop bit plus one start bit plus one parity bit or 11 bit length. The bit length is set to 11 because specifically I looked in the manual and using those dip switch settings I mentioned before, the Rackelvatic modem, I have it set to be a bit length of 11 bits. So I could either set, you know, eight data bits, no parity, two stop bits, or eight data bits, even parity, one stop bit, so yeah, you can set the bit length on the modem to be 11 bits, 10 bits, 9 bits, or even, I believe it goes down to 8 bits. Uh, but I have it set to the most because I wanted to test it out. So that's why I'm using 8 even 1 here, and the other side will have to use the same. So now let me go over and let you look at the other side. So this is the older DOS computer. Um, so one thing before uh, I continue any farther is that I am so sorry, Trinitron, but you're going to have to move because, unfortunately, the Trinitron is not an adequate monitor. It has some problems at the moment. I mean, it's not a monitor at all. It's a TV, and I'm using a scan converter to get the picture, but honestly, I want it to be as clear as possible, which is why this Trinitron, even though it's an amazing TV, it's got some problems, and uh, it won't be here for much longer, um, but so I'm going to be using a non-time period LCD monitor instead, uh, so you all can get a very clear picture. So I just have the spare monitor lying around. Uh, honestly, in all honesty, I want to fix um, this over here. So that that's just another TV down there, an extra one. I want to fix this, which is actually a computer monitor. This is a VGA um, by Gateway. Uh, I believe it's an EV. 700 yes so that to be honest with you does work but there are a ton of problems with it so that's gonna that repair is going to be in a future video where i take a look at that thing um, but for now i was using that old trinitron tv which is a nice tv but it does not do very well because the scan converter i bought is pretty garbage 
Um, so I'll be using this one so you all can see the screen clearly. And let me go ahead and plug it in. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Uh, All right. Oh, there, there it comes up on the screen. It just took a while. It's going to be pretty dark unless I turn off the lights. In fact, let me go do that right now. Hopefully that's a bit better. <laughs> it is pretty dark. So this is going to start DOS because this is my old DOS PC. Uh, this is the phone jack from the uh, phone. Um, and this is the one from the Racklevatic modem. Uh, and so because I want, if I wanted to dial to the other computer and have to use the phone on the same line as the modem, these two are going to get tied together with that switch or with that extender, as I was talking about. And instead of using that extender, in fact, I'm going to use this five port extender because the other one doesn't really fit onto the phone line simulator. So go ahead and plug the phone in. Go ahead and plug the Rackle Vatic modem in. And that will be the device port number one on the phone line simulator. Um, now let me just do some cable management here. Make sure nothing is terribly tangled. Uh, well, it's not going to be pretty, but eh. See if I can get it to not fall off. All right, nice. So, uh, so there they are plugged in to one port of the phone line simulator, uh, both the phone and the modem. So if I pick it up, I hear a dial tone. So that's working and the light comes on. Now, the reason why I'm not plugging, obviously, the, this computer, the PCI modem, into that one is because as soon as I do it, it dials the other side. So I have to do a little bit of configuring first and I'll be right back. So the configuration is loading on the other computer right now because I have to configure that modem slightly differently because of its issue. But uh, the one last thing to do over on this computer is to plug the uh, serial cable, the nine pin, remember I'm using this converter from Amazon, plug that into the COM port over here and so there it's plugged in <clears throat> all right i kind of have to turn the lights on because i can't see it's gotten so dark this is the modem with the problem uh that it um can't do this and talk at the same time um it will as soon as connected to the phone line uh start to ring the other side or make the side busy so the problem what i have to do is that right before I dial, I issue the dial command and then plug the modem in manually. Now this is going to work except for the fact that as of right now, it, it has to listen for dial tone. And obviously if I dial and plug it in, it's not going to get any dial tone. So I have to type ATX1 to ignore dial tone and busy tone. So ATX1, okay. And that, according to Wikipedia, uh, should both ignore dial tone and busy tone. So this is pretty much this computer taken care of. I'm just going to, you know, double check the settings one more time. Say, oh, they aren't good. The one with the Racklevatic modem is running DOS. And so I'm going to use a program called Telex. Uh, I tried Kermit. I didn't really like it. <laughs> um, that, that, that's not to say it's bad, but I, I just had problems... The data wasn't coming over. I couldn't use the settings that I wanted. And then I tried it with Telex and it worked fine. So um, that's the one I'm going to be using. So I'm just going to copy it over on a floppy disk from my removable drive. Let's see if I can send to floppy. Mm -mm -mm. do a reset I think it's kind of glitching out 
right. So we are gonna get this to work eventually. Uh, P K. Uh, for some reason I keep typing X's. There we go. So this should unpack it. There we go. All right. So now we have a telex directory. And now hopefully we are compatible. Yes. Let's go. Mmm. Feels good. <laughs> All right. So we are not going to use. I'm going to cancel that. All right. We do have a color monitor. I can afford that. 300 baud. We're using COM1 on for the Rankle Vatic on this computer. We're using none for int 14. I do want a status line and I do want a menu. And now that's setting itself up. And look at this. In fact, I'm going to have to hold the camera in my hand this time. Um, so we've got our RTS DTR light on. It's trying to transmit to it, but this uh, basically was asserted by Telex. So it's the computer saying, okay, I'm ready to send. Data terminal ready is always on. That's a dip switch setting. Again, I can link you the manual for that if you want. Um, so here we are set up, but we're not quite set up yet because I need to configure this. So we do want 300. We want even parity. So change that to E81. One. one stop it on COM1. Okay. I want local echo to be on, and I want line feed also to be on. Now this is going to be the tricky, I'm just dialing a random number, because with the phone line simulator, I think I mentioned this before, but in case you're confused, you can dial whatever you want with the phone line simulator. As soon as it picks off the hook, it dials the other side. It gives two seconds of dial tone and then uh, rings the other side. Um, and so you can just put whatever you want here. So I have to be quick. We're using blind dialing. So as soon as I hit enter, all I have to do is plug it in here. And hopefully it will happen. So three, two, one. Okay, modem picked up. No carrier. So it, I heard it. It sent the tone over. That was interesting. And I think it picked up. So I'll be back when I get it to work. Okay, so a little bit of explanation. It's about an hour later, and um, for some reason, though I, I have no doubt that it will work in the future, TerraTerm on the Windows 98 PC wasn't working. So, as you can see... I'm still running Windows 98. I'm just running the Telex in full screen. For some reason, it's just better for me to stick between two terminal programs of the same type because using TerraTerm, it was working one way, but the other way was getting garbage. It came down to character set. TerraTerm defaults to UTF-8, um, and this was sending ANSI. And so what was happening is that one side was sending ANSI and working with the other side, but the side that was sending UTF-8 would show up as garbage on the DOS PC. There was no configuration in Telex for setting UTF-8, and there was no configuration in TerraTerm for setting ANSI. So what I ended up doing was switching to Telex on the Windows 98. Then there was an additional problem of parity. Uh, they were both using NE1, because I rem remember... Uh, I said that the uh, character set for NE1 was 11 bits long. There was 11 bit length configured with Rackle Vatic. But for whatever reason, one side was showing up great and the other sh side was showing up part of the time, but with like weird pauses or delays or it would skip characters. So something wasn't in sync with the way that one modem did parity versus the other one. And so what I ended up doing is just taking parity off. So the character set is just N81, no parity. 8-bit length, uh, one stop it, 
obviously one start bit uh, for a total data length of 10 bits. Reset the dip switches on the Racklevatic for 10 bit length, and now it works fine. So I can demonstrate. Demonstration of 300 bits per second. Um, let's go ahead and dial to the Racklevatic first and let it use its auto answer feature. So for that, I'm going to unplug this. So now the line is free. Hang up there. So if I go ahead with italics and type AT, dial, random number. And then this is key. For this to work, this has to go in at pretty much the exact same time. So three, two, one. No dial tone. All right, let's try it again. It's really tricky to do right. A, T, dial, random number, and make sure, oh, hmm, oh, I see what the problem is, that's the problem, there we go, three, two, one, dial, oh, there should be, there, there we go, now it's ringing, now it's dialing, Negotiating, connect 300. All right, there's a little bit of garbage on this side. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of hard. I will turn off the lights for this part. I said I would, and now I'll do it. There we go. And it doesn't really help that much. So if I go ahead and, as you can see. So I'll type from the DOS. Hello, my name is Connor. How are you doing? Question mark. I am doing well. Dot, dot, dot. And as you can see, it shows up the exact same on the Windows 98 PC. All right. So now let's go over to the Windows 98. Uh, this took me a long time. Time to make. I hope you enjoy. Enjoy. Oh no, I made a mistake. Let's see if the backspace works. It does. Enter. So there you go. I hope you. I really do hope you can see that. So that is 300 baud. If I hold down key, that is about the speed that the characters come through. Like that. And in reverse. A bit slower, actually. Now, I think this comes down to the fact that uh, one of these has character repeat on. Like, the, the character repeat for this DOS PC and the keyboard is it slower. Uh, and I can set that up in settings. Whereas, that's much faster. But that is 300 baud right there. Um, and let's go ahead and clear the screen. Like that. There we go. Let's go ahead and send a file over. Uh, let's use Kermit. And let's send over... Um, I want to send over DOS's README. Why not? So let's go ahead and get down to README.txt in the DOS directory. F10. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and receive it. Kermit. See if it works. Hey, there we go. Nice. So there we have 300 baud. This is so cool. I'll, I'll let you look a little bit closer. So you may be able to make it out. 320 bytes sent, 402 now. 402 received, 482. That is 300 baud. Which translates at 10 bit length to about 30 bytes per second. That is so cool. I could listen to them all day. That is 
so cool. Uh, it works perfectly. Nice. All right, but since I don't have all day for 60, uh, 60,000 bytes to send, I'll have to end this early. But that is so cool. All right. Transaction aborted. It'll go away on the other side, hopefully. Yep, there we go. Let's go ahead and uh, hang up. So plus, plus, plus to break out into command mode. AT hang up. There we go, off hook. But I still have to unplug this thing because it's broken. Um, so now, since you saw it like that, let's try this again, but with... Um, with the other side dialing. So remember, that is the automatic answer feature, but in order to originate or to dial out, that has to be manual. So your commands won't work on the computer. Remember, you have to use a phone. So I, I don't have to dial a number. All I have to do is basically just place it on speakerphone because the other side will automatically dial because it's the phone line simulator. So now it's ringing, as you can see up there. And I'm gonna have to go ahead and put this back in the tripod because I only have two hands. Um, so, all you have to do is plug in to this side and you have to type ATA. So, hopefully, come on. Negotiate. Hmm. It was working before. Oh, I know what the problem is. I haven't put this in data mode. There we go. There we go. <laughs> that, that modem wasn't in data mode. That's what the other switch on there does, by the way. It sets it between voice and data mode. So voice, you dial over with your phone, place it in data mode, and then hang up your phone. For me, though, it's just on mute so that my voice doesn't interfere with it. Because your voice will interfere with this. For example, if I picked up the phone and talked into it, I get garbage on the other side. As you can see, sometimes it's enough to mess up the connection. So that, that's, that's garbage for my voice appearing on the other side. So we'll just hang that up. There we go. All right, and we can still type normally both ways. So we'll clear all the garbage out of the way. And now let's do it reverse. Let's go ahead and send a file from this computer to the other one. So we'll use, uh, we'll use Z modem this time. And we'll go ahead and select, I have no idea. Go ahead and select scandisk.log. We'll send that over. So F10 automatically appears on this side now with a progress bar. There's the receive light. It's going crazy. Downloading it. This is what would happen back in the day when you when you wanted to download a file. It's pretty cool. It's still coming through. Data is still coming through, but a progress bar isn't moving. So, okay, I just aborted it for some reason. Oh no, it's still coming through. Well, I'll have to abort it on this side too. Okay, we could be stuck. Ooh, we're really stuck, aren't we? So one last thing. Just to let you see how slow, um, give you a good 
uh, understanding of actually how slow um, this is in terms of uh, BOD. Let's see here. I want to send over a text, just a pure, purely text file. This one right here. So if I send this over to this PC. This is, this is sending at max speed, keep in mind. Look at this. That is so cool. I love speeds that are this slow where you can actually see the data being typed out. That's just so cool. That is just so cool. And if I do it in reverse, um, okay, if I hang up there, so now that we've hung up, it's gonna quit on me over here, but um, let's go ahead and dial from here. So unplug, unplug, dial from this area, so. Dial, bring the other side. So connecting from the Rackovatic to the other one again. Let's see if it works. Probably right now. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we say connect 300. So let's go ahead and do the reverse. Over here, I'm gonna send a text file. Um, let's go ahead and send, uh, it's not going to work. Let's go ahead and send, uh, telex, read, read me. No, we, we, that's when we received telex dot doc. Why not? So F10. Oh, we got something. Wow. It's completely off center. Oh, that's cool. That's so cool. It works perfectly. It works without any error. This is without parity on. It, it is in perfect working order. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, this incredibly long video. I'm thinking in my mind about how I'm going to edit this down into a watchable length. So, thank you for watching to the end. Uh, and I hope to show stuff like this off to you more often. I found a bunch of this, these kinds of things down in the old building. Well, there may be another modem on its way uh, in a future video. So, uh, yes. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And um, so I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I just love how slow that speed is. It's so cool because you can actually hear the data coming across. All right. Well, uh, thanks for watching to the end. And I... Hope to see you soon. Bye.